Hello, Dark Moon Doll here. I just wanted to share with you guys a little bit of information about spirit animals. Um, a lot of people have been having dreams about animals, uh, whether it's a black panther that seems to be a very popular uh, spirit animal that's showing up in people's dreams trying to teach them. Um, somebody recently talked about having cows in their dream. Um, so that's the thing about uh, animals is they will come into your dream to give you messages but if you don't know what that animal represents within your dream then you can be lost and not know what it means I wanted to share with you this article that uh, I came across in one of the magazines I used to subscribe to a long time ago it's uh, I lost the <laughs> I lost the cover to the magazine but, um, basically it's a pagan magazine and pagan means just means of the earth is all it means really people have turned the word pagan into being something evil but it's not really evil so um, let's see yeah, the name of this uh, magazine is called Pangaea or Pangaea and Gaia is the goddess she's mother earth so um, I take my hair my hair is kind of <laughs> tight because it's been a hot day but this is by, um, it's an interview with this guy named, he's an author, his name is Scott King, and um, he's experienced uh, the phenomenon of seeing animals, you know, spirit animals, ever since he was a kid. So I wanted to share his story with you, and then you could tell me what you think about it. So it's an interview that they're doing, that the, um, this, uh, the person is writing this article, she's doing an interview of Scott King, and her name is... Lucy Cavendish. So, get ready for an interview. Your interview. <laughs> and thanks for joining me today. So, this the name of this article is called "Talk to the An Animals." You could probably find this online if this if this uh, magazine is still in print. I'm not sure if it is because it came out in 2000. This is March of 2005. So, so here we go. So the name of the article is called Talk to the Animals, interviewed by Lucy Cavendish. Scott King, author of Animal Dreaming, the first shamanic field guide to Australia's native and induced species, I mean introduced, sorry, let's start, the, let's start this again. Scott King, author of Animal Dreaming, the first shamanic field guide to Australian native and introduced species trained under a recognized medicine woman and has practiced animal dreaming since childhood. A regular contributor to the Australian pagan magazine Witchcraft on the subject of animal totems. Scott has been the subject of numerous interviews and stories in, on local radio, television, and magazines. Scott was interviewed by Pangea by Lucy Cavendish. So here we go. Lucy Cavendish, this is what she is saying. Could you describe your first interactions with animal spirits? Was there a particular event that kicked off your ability? And this is what Scott has to say. As an eight-year-old, I was sitting in the kitchen with my younger sister, and all these white rabbits began falling from the ceiling. Seriously. But what triggered my realization that my connection to spirit was inspired largely by the medicine of the animals was when I first noticed the black cat that followed me wherever I went. I told my parents the cat was there, and as they never said, that it wasn't, I just assumed that everyone could see it. It was a beautiful cat, almost human in nature. It used to sit on the vanity basin in the bathroom, curl up on my bed, smile at me around corners, and sit with me as I did my homework after school. When I was about 15, the cat stood up on its hind legs and became my grandfather. I guess spirit knew that I would feel less threatened by an animal spirit than I would by the sudden appearance of my long dead grandfather. From then on, I began seeing the energy I had previously only felt with people as being animal like in both form and nature. So I'm not gonna read the whole the whole article. You can probably find it online. Um, but this is a really good uh, magazine and magazines like this where it talks to you about other people's personal experiences with animals, animal helpers, animal guides that are here here to help you out. Um, your pets are here to help you out, and you may not know that because they're here with you all the day and all the night, and you don't really, you know, think much about them um, and what they can do for you and help you and what 
magic exists within these animals. Have something to drink really quick. I'm drinking some uh, lime juice with raw honey, turmeric powder, cinnamon, and a dash of cayenne pepper. So, powder. So yeah, when you get ready to dream at night and you're interested in connecting with like a spirit animal of some sort, think about it. What is your favorite animal? What do you feel most comfortable with? Sometimes animals will show up to you uh, in your dreams to teach you a lesson even if you don't like that animal. You know what I'm saying? It'll just show up in your dreams anywhere to let you know that they're here to help and you just have to figure out what they're here to help with. <laughs> That's the hard part, but yeah. So yeah, thanks for joining me today for today's show. I guess you can call it Dream Talk, uh, talking about animals, uh, animal spirits. This guy, Scott King, um, he talks even further in this article about things like how you can incorporate animals into magical work. Um, <clears throat> I mean, a lot of times when I'm meditating, or if I'm celebrating the summer sauces, winter sauces, or whatever, I'll have, like, uh, my cat will just come in while I'm doing shit, you know, and he's a part of it, because he wants to be. It's not like I'm making him be a part of it, but he gets he get into a part of what I'm doing on a spiritual level. Just by his presence being there, his energy is just a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> yeah, just like all of us, we all have a spirit in it. And some people get um get kind of scary scared about like the idea of a uh spirit of an animal showing to you and then changing into a human i don't think that's under the realms of impossibility i think it's it's it happens all the time um it's just as not talked about and when it is talked about it's made to seem like something scary and woo woo and you know we should not um cross that line between human and animal uh, but I do feel like a lot of animals that I've met as far as pets have had a lot of human traits to them so um, it could get confusing for a lot of people and scary especially if you grew up with one main uh, type of religion religious belief so then it gets really confusing for a lot of people as to what to believe in because then you get into the subject of reincarnation and can you reincarnate into an animal instead of a human body? So that's some um, subjects we can handle in upcoming videos. <laughs> uh, I gotta take my hair down, it's kind of tight. But, but these snakes, these antenna come down. But yeah, uh, thanks for joining me today for today's show. Um, I hope you learned something from it. I hope it makes you want to search out more about um, these animal um, spirits that may come to you in your dreams or even show up to you when nobody's around in spirit form. They're trying to tell you something, they're trying to teach you something, and they're trying to help you. These animals want to help you. Um, you just have to be receptive to the help. If you're afraid, then they may not come around. They might just leave you and not come around until they feel like you can handle what they have to um, show you, the messages they have to show you. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for subscribing to this channel. Thanks for the likes and shares. And thank you for your kind comments. Leave your comments down below and let me know if you are feeling connected to the animals that show up in your dream. And if you'd like to um, donate to this channel, you could donate to my Google Pay. And I could do a video uh, talking about your dream and actually giving you my impressions of the dream. Because I feel like you, the dreamer, really knows what your dream means. Because it's coming from you. But sometimes it's hard to decipher that when we're confused about our lives <clears throat> and we can't see the forest for the trees. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Thank you so much for joining me. Please stay hydrated and, um, you know, take, you know, take a look around and see all the animals that are around you. I once read something that says that the first animal you see when you wake up is your spirit animal <laughs> for the day. And I see my cat, so... Here we go. All right. All righty, guys. Brightest blessings to you all, and I'll see you soon.